What is up guys? Today we're going to talk about why the majority of people in the churches will go to hell. Where's the error in their doctrine so bad that if they continue to believe in it, they won't be saved? Well, first to understand, we got to understand how to be saved. And it's actually very simple. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, so it says, after you heard the word of truth, which it continues to say is the gospel of your salvation, then after you believed in it, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, what is the gospel that you must hear, then trust and believe in to be saved? Because many people don't know what the gospel of salvation is. They think that the gospel of salvation is faith and doing works. Water baptism, doing tithes, calling upon the Lord with the mouth, and other works. The majority of people say that they're sharing the gospel, yet they don't even know what the gospel is. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1-4. through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Okay, so this is the gospel that you must hear, then believe and trust in to be saved, that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again for your sins. And now you might be wondering, what's the issue? Because the people in the churches claim to believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. They claim to trust in the atonement of Jesus' blood. Well, let's go back to verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Keeping in memory of this gospel is not the issue. Once the Holy Spirit is sealed in you, the Holy Spirit will make sure to keep this gospel in your memory. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. When you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, he'll make sure to keep this gospel in your memories. The second part of this verse is where people fall off, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Let's learn about what believing in vain is by first learning what vain means. Let's go to the original definition of vain in this context. Through the ideal of failure, idly, that is, without reason, or effect, without a cause, in vain. So, vain means no effect. You believed in the gospel, but there's no effect. There's no sealing of the Holy Spirit for you. There's no salvation for you. Believing without an effect is believing in vain. So we understand what believing in vain is. So let's learn more about what causes believing in vain. Why did the first guy hear the gospel? Then after he believed, there was the sealing of the Holy Spirit. While the second guy also heard the gospel, and believed, but there was no sealing of the Holy Spirit, there was no effect. Why? Because the first guy trusted in the gospel alone to save him, while the second guy also trusted in the works of the law to save him. If any man believes in the gospel plus anything else to save him, he's believing in vain. Under the New Testament, works doesn't play any role in salvation as it did in the Old Testament. Salvation today is by grace through faith alone in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for your sins. You must trust in that alone for justification, or else you are believing in vain, which means there's no effect. Now you might be wondering why I am saying this, because it's in the scriptures. Let's read more about this. Romans chapter 4, verse 13 through 14. For the promise that he should be the hearer of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Righteousness in this context means justification. So, for the promise that he should be the hearer of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the justification of faith. Now let's read verse 14. For if they which are of the law be hearers, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. There it is again, none effect, vain. If they which came from the law continue to be hearers of the law, their faith is void, and the promise made of none effect. What is the promise that has no effect? The promise is of the Holy Spirit. The effect is the sealing of the Holy Spirit. 
If you be a hearer of the law of works, there is no effect of the sealing of the Holy Spirit, and the promise is of none effect, because you believed in vain, because you trusted in the law or other works to save you. There's two ways to believe in vain. The first way, they believe without a cause or reason, as the definition said, without cause or reason. They don't accept and trust in it to atone for their sins, but they believe it can. Then the second way is as we read. They believe in the gospel to save them, but they also believe in the works also to play a role in their salvation. Let's read about why trusting in your works to save you is believing in vain. We are going to read all of Galatians chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Have ye begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you try to be saved under the law, which you cannot do perfectly, you're under a curse. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So if you're wondering why this is the specific punishment Jesus served instead of another punishment, it's because cursed is anyone that hangeth on a tree, and he was made this curse on our behalf, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuleth, or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. There it is again, the none effect, vain. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by the law. Remember, righteousness means justification. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. So if you're saying, well, I won't be cursed because I can continue all the things under the law. Verse 22 says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For of many of you have been baptized in Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. 
There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. But if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. And here is according to the promise. So now you get a better understanding of why trusting in your works in the New Testament, unlike the Old Testament, to save you is believing in vain. If the Bible says that we're saved by grace, that means that salvation already excludes any work. Romans chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So we know that grace is not something you work for. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, which means justification. His faith is counted for justification. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So we're seeing very clearly that salvation today does not consist works. It literally says, to someone who does not do any works for God, take someone that does not do any works for God, but believes on the one that justifieth the ungodly through his death, burial, and resurrection for their sins, his faith is counted for justification. And this justification, God imputeth Without works, it says in verse 6. Don't think I'm saying you shouldn't work for God. Don't get my message twisted here. But I'm showing you the Bible truth of how to be saved, and if you're believing in vain, and what that means. It means there's no effect, and you're going to be in hell unless you have a change of mind and trust alone in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for your sins. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8-9. through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. It just says not of works. It doesn't get much clearer than this. Really, how clear does it get? Not of works, lest any man should boast. So if you are saved by grace and you still boasting, what's wrong with you? But someone sealed with the Holy Spirit, they ain't going to be boasting. They're like, dang, my works had nothing to do with this. If I worked not... Or if I worked a hundred times, none of it had to do with my salvation. Because I know that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is the only thing sufficient. Things in the Old Testament wasn't. The animal sacrifices weren't. Nothing was. They still needed justification through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection before they could meet the Father. Let's continue. So you have people going around teaching you that you can't be saved until you get water baptized. That is believing in vain. You must trust that no work saves you, unlike it did in the Old Testament, which Jesus fulfilled. Notice what Paul says about baptism, water baptism, not the spiritual baptism of the Holy Ghost, but water baptism. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So now we're seeing a separation between water baptism and the gospel. So you cannot say that the, a part of the gospel is water baptism says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross should be made of none effect. There it is again! None effect. The cross having no effect of saving you because you trust in your water baptism. How can you trust that Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for your sins, but also believe that water baptism is required for your sins? How does that go together? We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so if you put your trust alone in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your sins, the ultimate, sufficient sacrifice, then God will impute His justification onto you, and you'll be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Again, don't get the wrong message here. This Holy Spirit in you will give you desire to work for God, but not to work for or to maintain salvation. And we ourselves should work out of the love for the gratitude of the grace God gave to us. In fact, you better work for God. The Bible says that you must hear with your ears, then you can believe and be sealed with the Holy Spirit. So, before someone can be sealed with the Holy Spirit, they must first hear this gospel. So it's our job to share this gospel to the other ones who might be deceived, believing in vain. We need to share this gospel. So that if they don't believe in vain, they can also have this amazing, graceful effect which is a promise from God. Last thing to read. Titus chapter 3, verse 5 through 9. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, 
but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So we are baptized, but it's a spiritual baptism of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made hears according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Many are called, but few are chosen, because many believe in vain. But for you, if you hear this gospel, I hope that you trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for your sins, and trust that it's sufficient on its own. May the grace of God be with you, and amen.